the term pre-diabetes has now been specifically introduced to capture those individuals whose blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not quite high enough to be called diabetes. Why should we care? Well, it turns out that the overwhelming majority of people who have diabetes in the world have type 2 diabetes. It accounts for 95% of all cases of diabetes. And that form of diabetes does not suddenly happen to people. People actually slide toward diabetes and pass through this intermediate stage of pre-diabetes, which can last for many, many years before they eventually develop diabetes. So it is smart medicine to begin to target and identify individuals with pre-diabetes. Most importantly, because there are interventions that can prevent the eventual progression of pre-diabetes to type 2 diabetes. And there may even be interventions that can reverse pre-diabetes and literally reset the metabolism back to normal. The greatest contributor to the worldwide diabetes epidemic we're not sure exactly what single factor contributes. We believe it's a combination of factors. Uh, between 1940 and the present era, 2017, a span of just under 80 years, the rates of Americans with diabetes increased from less than 1 million, 750,000 in 1940, to 30 million in 2000. 17. That's a 40-fold increase. So people always say that diabetes and hypertension and chronic diseases show a combination between genetic risk and things in the environment, right? The genes, which are the molecules that are transmitted through the generations from our parents, they tend to be very stable over time. They don't change like that. So it must be stuff in the environment that are really pushing the diabetes uh, epidemic. And those changes could well include the rising waist circumference and body mass index and the rates of obesity, the easy access to food, the diminishment of opportunities and activities uh, that we call physical activity, uh, the invention of the automobile, for instance, <laughs> created a dent in the compulsory mandatory physical activity individuals had to take the technologies that made cars widely affordable and available basically became exercise sparing the changing culture itself of school pe compulsory physical activity the changing nature of neighborhood yard uh, play among kids who would knock on each other's doors and let's play touch football all of those have changed now kids have to be enrolled in some kind of structured program at some expense uh, so lack of physical activity weight gain, and poor food choices, in my opinion, contribute disproportionately as environmental factors that combine with the genetic risk to uncover what we are now seeing as a, a raging global diabetes epidemic.